Hello everyone, I'm Rod Wortham and welcome to this edition of Race Face Driver Updates. We start at Dover International Speedway for a doubleheader weekend in the NASCAR Xfinity Series where Anthony Alfredo took on the Monster Mile in his number 21 Richard Childress Chevrolet. Let's go straight to the driver for a Race 1 recap. Everyone just finished up race number one here at Dover for the doubleheader weekend. Solid run, finished 11th. I wish we could add a top 10, but we had to fight back from 26th place starting position today. They had the new algorithm based on prior weekend's performance or prior race's performance, I should say. And uh, I wasn't in the car last week, but it didn't go so well, so we had to start towards the rear. But uh, we worked our way up into the top 15. And it's just extremely difficult to pass here. We worked on getting the balance better all day long. And, Guys did awesome on pit road, my Richard Childress racing guys up on the box, Andy Street and his botter Derek Nealon helped me out a lot figuring this place out and getting the car better for that last run. It was definitely much closer to where it needs to be. We definitely have to do a little bit more work tomorrow, but with the invert of the top 15, we should be starting around fifth or so. So hopefully we can capitalize on that, but I'm thankful to have ADS pipe and putting first on board. Solid run, we need to be better and I'm looking forward to trying to do that tomorrow. Thank you all for the support. Great run, Anthony. Now let's move on to race two. As you can hear from Anthony, they had some power steering issues before the race even started. Let's check in with Anthony. Everyone just finished 13th in race number two here at Dover for the doubleheader weekend in the NASCAR Xfinity Series. A lot of fun today. We didn't finish as well as yesterday and we think we could have finished even better. The car was great today. We we're really close to where we need to be. Not quite, uh, I think, where we need to be to win the race, but definitely good enough to have a much better run. We didn't have power steering to start the race, so instead of starting fifth, we had to start at the rear, and that really hurt us because, once again, we were clawing our way from the back of the field. Uh, finally got up there, and we had a long green flag run the whole last stage. Uh, struggled on the fire off, but it really came to us on the long run, and we stayed out on old tires as everyone was pitting, and we were able to, to maintain. We actually had great speed on old tires, but uh, we, we were just hoping on a caution. So we came in and pitted for fuel only, and I was on old tires. Everybody else was on new, and I was hanging my tongue out, driving the heck out of that thing, sliding all over the place, trying to trying to do what I could to maintain, and we finished 13th. But it's a solid day for our team. I appreciate the hard work of everybody at Richard Childress Racing, and our Chevy Camaros are, are getting faster and faster every week, and I'm getting better behind the wheel, learning more and more. Uh, but it's been a great year so far, so we'll try to maintain this, keep learning every week, uh, getting better as a team, and uh, I'm looking forward to the next one, which is Daytona next week, my first trip to uh, one of the most notorious and well-known tracks in NASCAR. So that's going to be a phenomenal experience, and I look forward to sharing it with you all. And once again, I want to thank ADS Pipe and Footing First for coming on board this weekend for the first time. Glad they got to be on their car for two races. Appreciate support uh, their support and representing them as well. So. Uh, like I said, look forward to the next race, and I hope you all enjoyed the race today. Overall, a pretty good weekend. Up next for Anthony, Daytona International Speedway on Saturday, where Anthony takes on the high-speed high banks for the very first time. We now head to Colorado National Speedway for the Arkham Menard Series West Enos 150, presented by Napa Auto Parts, where we find Jesse Love, driver of the number 19 Napa Power Premium Plus Toyota. Jesse started off by winning the General Tire Pole Award and then took the lead at the drop of the green flag and led 144 laps en route to his third win of the year. As you can see from this short video clip, it was not easy. Go again, Blaine Perkins. Using the bumper to get underneath Jesse Love off of turn two. They're slamming each other down the back stretch. Trading Payne off into turns three and four. Can Gio Selzy sneak in there and make it a three-way battle for the lead? Again, knocking fenders off into turns one and two. Blake. Wow, wonder how this is gonna turn out. You race people how they race you. Great job, Hammer. Up next for Jesse, Arkham Menard Showdown at Worldwide Technology Raceway in Madison, Illinois, just outside of St. Louis, Missouri. Connor Mozak returned to the Cars Tour at Franklin County Speedway, known as the fastest 3.8 mile track in the world for the very first time. Connor had limited practice due to rain in the area 
but still put the number 88 Junior Motorsports Chevrolet into the top 10 in qualifying, qualifying eighth. Connor's race plan was to maintain position until the car started to come to life later in the race. And with a timely late race restart, he moved into fourth and maintained that position, finally bringing home a third place finish. Up next for Connor, August 29th at Langley Speedway for another Cars Tour race. Sam Butler was at Hickory Motor Speedway for twin 40 lap features. In race one, Sam returned to the podium in third place and then brings home another top 10 in eighth in race number two, despite having some damage to the car. Sam said driving the car was like driving a car with a parachute attached to it. Up next for Sam, late model stocks at Hickory on August the 29th. Grant Thompson turns in a dominant performance at Five Flags Speedway in his number 38 Kurt Britt Motorsports Pro Truck. Grant was fastest in practice, P1 in qualifying, set a new track record, led every lap, and parked it in victory lane for the third time this year at Pensacola. Grant's 2020 truck season recap, five first, one second, two thirds in eight starts. Up next for Grant, pro late models at Five Flag Speedway this weekend. Caden Honeycutt had three nights of racing at Texarkana 67 Speedway in his Sport Dirt Modified. Caden finished second in the B Main and brought home a seventh place finish in the A Main. Let's check in with the driver for his take on the weekend. Hey guys, uh, we just got back from uh, Texarkana Raceway, uh, the $5,000 $5, uh, to win show. And Came home seventh. Uh, we started seventh, finished seventh in the 50 lap main event. And man, we just kind of fought, loose the whole race. Um, overall, I think it was a good weekend. Uh, we made a lot of passing. I mean, we were fifth in passing points out of like 50 cars. So I can't complain about that at all, especially after rebuilding it and going through the whole car, just making sure everything was correct. And uh, after the race, we uh, kind of examined it a little bit, and it turns out we had way too much stagger. We had almost two and a half inches of stagger, and everybody else was running way below that. So uh, we'll have it fixed, be ready for next time. But, hey, we got a, I think we got a really good piece for next week. So we'll see you guys next week. Over 37 cars took the green over the weekend, all shooting for that $5,000 to win check. Joey East brings home another top 10 finish at Madera Speedway in the Nutup Pro Late Model Series. After a fifth place qualifying effort, Joey was running fifth with 10 laps to go, but cut down a tire, but he managed to nurse that car home to a 10th place finish. Up next for Joey, back at Madera Speedway on September the 5th. Jake Bowman had one of his best qualifying efforts of the year, qualifying P3 and started on the front row with the draw and led the first 26 laps in his number 71 Nate Clower Motorsports Junior Late Model at Madera Speedway on Saturday. Jake then settled into fourth for the remaining 44 laps, bringing home another top five in fourth place. Up next for Jake, Junior Late Models, Madera Speedway, September 5th. Cassidy Hines qualified P5 at Madera Speedway for round five of the Junior Late Model Series and was running in the top five before suffering a broken ring and pinion in the rear end of her race car. Tough break for the 17-year-old Arvado, Colorado driver. Up next for Cassidy, Madera Speedway, September 5th. On another note, our prayers go out to everyone in California and Colorado who are dealing with the devastating fires. We hope that all of you remain safe. That's it for this week's Race Face Driver Updates. And remember, if you've missed any of our shows, you can get caught up at raceface.tv on demand. Don't forget to check out Race Face Spotlight this Thursday night at 8 o'clock Eastern Time featuring Race Face Driver Joe Valento. Don't forget to follow us on social media. Make sure to check out Speed Zone Race Store for the latest in apparel from your favorite race face driver. As always, we encourage you to support local racing in your communities. 
We'll be back next week with more from your favorite race face drivers. So go out there, have a great race week. I'm Rod Wortham. Thanks for watching.